Right, so now in this video, we're going to look at an 8-pole uh, dip switch. So that's dual. You can see there's two rows there. In line, they're in line uh, packages. Um, so like an integrated circuit, but it's just a mechanical switch. There's little sliders right here. Right now they are off. They're all set to the left. You can see to the right we have on right there. And so for the uh, blue LEDs, I decided to put the switch on the low side of this circuit. We're switching the low side and it's off. Now it is on right there, one of them. Uh, we can turn the other one on if we want. Or we could, uh, so we had them both off at one time. The uh, top one was on and uh, now the bottom one is on and previously we had both of them on so we had four options that we could set there and um, until we switch it again it's going to remain in that state and moving on down we have the uh, red leds there so same thing we can have them both off right there if we want to we could turn the top one on we could turn uh the two of them on so there's three options that we had right there or else we could have the bottom one on well the top one is off so again we have four options uh right there if we wanted to uh communicate something we you know we could have like 16 options that uh we have because we got four options up there and four options down there you multiply them together for like uh, 16 options that you can have for whether certain leds are on or off and now we're going to zoom back and look at the uh, power supply so this is kind of just bonus stuff it's a pretty simple component there this video is intended uh, more for uh, people just starting off in electronics there's all kinds of switch options that you can have even as mechanical uh, switches right there and uh, technically most of the time you're studying electronics you're going to look at uh, digital switches where stuff turns on electrically so here you can see we have the blue LEDs on the higher side. So this is considered low side switching because it's going to ground. Whereas over here, the switch is on the higher side. It's on the positive side. So we consider that five volts, the red rail, and the uh, blue rail, zero volts right there. Same thing over there. The two rails are uh, connected. So you can see we got about 16 milliamps of current flowing. Almost all of that is the red LED. The blue LED is brighter than the red LED. So I have a higher value resistor, 1000 ohms, uh, 220 ohms for the red LED. So one fourth of the resistance alone would get you four times as much current. But uh, the blue LED drops some more voltage and uh, thus it's going to lower the current even more in relationship to the red LED. It doesn't drop as much voltage. There's more voltage across the resistor, which is lower value, so you get even more current. So the vast majority of that current is the red LED. If I turn it off, so it's the lower one, it's the lower switch right there. There you can see um, we don't have hardly any uh, current flowing right now. If I turn this one on, it... Uh, should you know about double this isn't as accurate as a multimeter there but we probably got you know close to like three milliamps of current whereas if we turn on both of the red leds so now you can see it's about 15 higher and again it's going to get about 15 higher so we're somewhere in the range of about 30 milliamps of current the vast majority is the uh, red leds but you can see the blue leds are about just as bright so they're more energy efficient. We're getting, you know, as much light out of them as the red ones, but uh, with a lot less current. The vast majority of this is the red LEDs. Hopefully that makes sense. So I put 100 uh, milliamps because I expected, I was thinking if I used 220 ohms along the whole route there, that we could get closer to 80, you know, maybe like 60 milliamps of uh, current but I decided not to go that route. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, finally, I want to also mention that uh, right now this switch is closed. There is no gap between the metal there and the metal there. They're in contact and they can conduct. That's why that top LED is on. Same with the uh, bottom LED there. If I move the switch to the off position, now it's open. So there's a gap. That metal part right there is no longer in contact with that uh, metal part there. You consider it open because the electricity has to stop. Um, and then it can't uh, pick up because there's a gap, even though you can't see it. The uh, creator of the switch did all that for you. All you have to do 
is move a slider. So right now, that one's open, that one's closed. We have a closed circuit, current can flow. Again, we can open it so that it cannot flow. So again, this is um, you know a video for beginners. Hopefully you enjoyed if you watched it. Uh, make sure you check out one of the other videos that I posted in the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.